And so now just centering in with me. Just taking in a deep breath and just letting it go. Hmm. And just being present to this moment. Taking in and just recognizing that I know that there is only one power, one presence, one divine love. This power and this presence is everywhere. It is in the mountains that we saw in the film, the mountains that surround us, in the clouds, in the sun, in the spring, in the animals, in the insects, the ladybugs. It is in the wind. And just even within all those things, it is also within me. It lives in me, through me, as me, as it does for every single person in this room, every single person on our Zoom call, every single person within the sound of my voice. I know that everyone, every individual expresses as this divine love, this presence. And so I just speak my word today, knowing that today is a blessed day, that we as a community and as individuals fall into our hearts, that we have ears on our hearts, that we take in standing in our vulnerability, knowing that that is our power, the power for beautiful listening, for sharing, And so I just know in this moment that every single person comes away with a small kernel, whatever that is, big kernels, small kernels of wisdom that they take with them for the rest of the week. And I, just, I also just know that Reverend Michael is blessed as the Spirit moves through him and speaks to us. I'm so, so grateful. I'm so grateful for this teaching, for this truth, for this joy, for this presence, this divine love, as me, as this community. And I just let my word go into that law, knowing that it is already done. And together we say, and so it is. And now we'll have two minutes of silence, and then Brent and Brett and Amy will bring us back. Lovely, thank you. So I wrote this nice little intro for Reverend Michael and then left it at home. <laughs> yeah, I'm winging it. Um, what I was thinking was that I've known Michael for 15 years. He was the minister when I first started at CSL. Many of us are familiar with that longevity. And we've grown up together. Yeah. Michael showed me what it's like to stand up here and be vulnerable and authentic and powerful all at the same time. (laughs) 
I think his bio was shared on the website. I think you can learn more about Michael if you want to. He, he um, is out of Seattle and lives with his partner, Scott, and they've been together 43 years. Is that right? So Michael's had a varied career, but he is our dear. So I'm just going to let Michael speak for himself here. <laughs> um, so I want to welcome all of you here, and I want to welcome our online visitors. Um, and I find it fascinating because one of our core beliefs is that we are all one, and that there's no separation. And I think technology has sort of taught us that, that here we are in this room, and yet here we are out in the world. Um, so, no day but today, and there's only us, and there's only now. So give in to love, there's no other path, no other way, no day but today. So over the past few weeks, you have heard from different people about vulnerability. Reverend David talked about defining and aligning with vulnerability, and he shared how pain oftentimes opens the door to light. Reverend Don, talked about letting go and letting in. He talked about growing up, crying was not an option for him, nor asking for help. And through his tears and through his learning through science of mind, he began to develop a spiritual path that led him to ministry. And Reverend Bonnie talked about seeing and being seen, and her story about allowing herself to risk being visible, risk being visible with a class that she was promoting and teaching. So I had to give some thought today around vulnerability and the power and the passion and the possibility that comes from being vulnerable. So one of the things I do is I get to the gym and I actually do a meditation of blessing of the chakras while I'm sitting there on a treadmill, okay? And I thought, you know, this would be an amazing talk to go through each of our chakras. How many are you familiar with chakras when I use that term? Okay. So imagine the vulnerability of the seven major chakras. What would be revealed to us in terms of doing that? I thought that would be great, but I think that's better as a workshop and not as a Sunday talk. <laughs> so instead, what I want to do is three things. I want to briefly share with you some of my stories of my vulnerability. And then I want us to lean into a shared history many of us have had about our vulnerabilities. And the third, I want to honor some of the success of your vulnerability. And of course, I'm going to tell you where to go from here. <laughs> Renee Brown says, vulnerability is a state of emotional exposure that comes with a certain degree of uncertainty. It involves a person's willingness to accept the emotional risk 
that comes from being open and willing to love and be loved. What I find interesting about myself is, is being loved Owning that, owning that, makes me vulnerable. Okay, so what are some of my stories? Well, there is only us, there is only now, and there is only here. I grew up with an alcoholic dad, and what I learned was anger, and I learned shame, but I also learned forgiveness and love. The paradox of vulnerability. Coming out as a gay man, I was faced with discrimination, hatred, fear, violence, and what I also found was power in being visible and knowing I was whole. I served as an executive director for a gay organization during the height of AIDS in Seattle. And what I had to experience were board members, staff, clients, friends, dealing with grief, and loss, and death. Dealing with hatred. Becoming untouchables in a community. But what I also learned was courage, affection, deep listening, to be present with love. I was also recruited as a CEO for an international children's organization. I love the fact that I was recruited. My ego went really well with that. <laughs> I was being paid well, which was also a very unusual experience for a social worker. Okay, And so the vulnerability there was sort of the good news, bad news was being vulnerable about being prosperous, okay? And one would think, well, no, you know, you're, you're, you're being honored, you're being prosperous, and yet, for me, that was, that, that was vulnerability. And part of that vulnerability was suddenly all my stuff about my worthiness, my competence came up to the surface, and I had to work through that in order to be successful in this particular organization. And it was a very significant lesson for me to really take a look at what prosperity means for me and what are the lessons there, um, other than being spoiled by it. <laughs> um, many years ago, I met my husband, Scott, and I proposed to him on our second weekend. And what you need to know is I was really clear after meeting him twice that I was willing to risk being vulnerable and committing myself to this man. To be wholly visible and present with him. And that was 42 years ago. And you would think we'd get over being vulnerable with one another. Well, we're not, you know. And, and part, of that, part of that is there's a richness in the relationship where we are continually learning and growing. You know, and a lot of our old programs are still with us, as much as it pisses me off, but it, they're there. <laughs> they're there. However, what's true is I'm more conscious of them. And because I'm more conscious of them, I'm able to, to work with them differently, you know. And one of the most recent ones for me was, was 
recognizing how codependent I am with my brothers and sisters and how that was not a good thing for me, even though I love problem solving with them and I love giving them advice. Oh, I love giving them advice. <laughs> However, what I also realized, and, and a friend and mentor said, you know, Michael, you're getting in their way. You are getting in their way. They have their journey. And you need to love and support them in their journey. You don't need to fix them. Well, you know how difficult that is for a controller. <laughs> not to be able to step in and fix something. And the irony there, the paradox there for me was that Actually, it was one of the skills that I learned in growing up in an alcoholic family system that I am really good at problem solving and fixing things. And there are times when that is what is needed. And I just need to pay attention to, one, where it is needed and when I am being called and when my ego is just interfering. The other thing for me was my call to ministry was a time of vulnerability. And uh, I remember being with co my colleagues in classes. And the nickname I was given was, Michael, you're the canary in the coal mine. <laughs> and um, what I realized was that I've always been willing to go to those dark places, those, air, those places of mystery. And I've, I have found that I've had the courage to then share those moments, those places of vulnerability. And what I found, what I found when I did that was not only did it enrich me, but it gave others permission to share similar journeys. And so what started to happen was this sense of deep connection that moved us all forward. Comfortable? No. Tears? Yes. Being vulnerable with my tears? Yes. As some of you are well aware of <laughs> that. So the number two area I want to talk to is the time we share together and the vulnerabilities that we're showing up there. So once again, there is only us. There's only now. And there's only here. So it was in February 20, 2016 that I began to serve as your interim minister. Well, the second time, yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so my longevity here as, as a minister serving you almost exceeds Reverend David's time here <laughs> in that. <clears throat> okay, so what are the stories of vulnerability that we share together? Now, see, Unlike some of your speakers, I know you. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 okay, I, I know you, you know? It's not as if you have not been vulnerable with me and I have not been vulnerable with you, okay? So I get to tell some of our stories. <clears throat> so, but I guess I'll start with Ernest. <laughs> So Ernest says, there is an irresistible potential pressing against everyone for self-expression. If we listen, we shall hear it, not as a voice, but as a feeling, as a divine urge to express. So if I was to characterize this group, I would have to say you are irresistible in terms of potential pressing against you for self-expression. 
And you have never hesitated self-expressing. <laughs> never. OK. Now, that's good news, and that's bad news, depending on what you were expressing. <laughs> so I came in, though, at a time when there was significant loss. You had, you had had the sudden departure of a newly hired minister, and it was a time of confusion, uncertainty. There was conflict. There was anger. There was gossip. There was judgment. There was grief. There was loss. There was distrust and uncertainty. Why did I even come here? OK? However, there was also the power of hope. It was a really deep, deep hope. And then there was humor, and there were tears, and there was wisdom. And we gained that from each other, and we gained it from our teachings within the science of mind. What we had to do was risk being visible with each other. We had to risk being vulnerable with each other. We could no longer just live with our images. We had to become real. We had to stop taking sides. And we had to create a space that was safe, where each of us could be heard and visible. And what we discovered was it was not easy. I'm sorry, it was not easy. Um, but we learned and we used some tools. We, we, we cherished the parable of the good news, bad news, who knows? I still don't know. <laughs> the Four Agreements from Don Miguel. Be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. Each of those are challenges for us. I mean, one of the things I'm really skilled at is taking everything personally. <laughs> you know, I've mastered that. I've mastered that, you know, and I, somehow I have to be aware how that plays out in my life in a lot of different ways. It's, it's you know, it goes back to my my need for approval, you know? And fortunately, you were all kind enough to approve me. It's, it's probably why I stayed around, you know? What we also had to do, which is another area of vulnerability, is we had to step outside our comfort zone. Um, we had to stop playing small. And we have to allow our vulnerability to be visible. So one of the tools we used here was music. And we've used music even today to console, to inspire, to open our hearts. For me, music has always been this powerful invitation to be more visible. Um, and then our tears have always been an invitation to go deeper, to go deeper in that. And of course, there were angel cards. Angel cards that assisted us in asking and responding to some really difficult questions. And we did it. We we supported one another to step outside our comfort zones during this period of time. So you increased your volunteer effort. At one point, you decided it was time to play the game, to get committed, and to show up. And you increased your volunteer efforts. You increased your financial support. You stopped gossiping, and you started to be impeccable with your word. 
because you were, you were at a decision point where I basically said, I will be more than willing to close you down unless you move out of uncertainty and allow yourselves to commit to your spiritual community. Okay? And at that point, that point, you committed. So for me, I got to cry for you. And I got to sing for you. That was outside my comfort zone to, to one, share with Amy a song, and then at one point to solo. And that was vulnerability for me and making myself visible. You also f facilitated a very thorough search for your new minister, Reverend David. So it's about celebrating success and asking where being vulnerable will next take you. And that involves all of you now, whether you shared that history with me or not. It's, it's where are you going to go? What have you been through as a community? You have Reverend David, who has set a record here for longevity as a minister. You survived COVID and you developed an outreach program or tech, through technology. However, COVID became this incredibly powerful tool to look more deeply at who you are and what your core beliefs are about being one. And there was division within the community. There was conflict within the community that was reflective of what was going on nationally for us. You have your spiritual tools to support you through looking at those issues and moving through them. And what I know, what I know is those issues still are out there and there's still healing that needs to happen from wounds that had occurred. You see, that's an example of something that, as a minister, coming back to you, I would say, should you really even say that? Should you raise something that significant? Are, am, I, am I willing to be that vulnerable with you? To say that our love is deep enough to even take on that level of vulnerability. And my belief is we are. We are. You have success in terms of, of advancing your technology, and then you have the success of creating this space. And what you need to know, or what I, need, what I know about things like that, is creating a space like this is really wonderful, but it's also vulnerable. And the people who came together in order to do this, my hunch, if you talk to them, they, would, they could highlight for you different times when it felt really vulnerable for them to move forward. And yet, they move forward, and you've been blessed with this space. So I think most important in doing all this is to recognize how much we learn and how much we build upon our vulnerability. And whether it's good news around vulnerability or bad news around vulnerability, it's that journey that allows us to be visible, real, and authentic. So, this is where angel cards might be useful as you take a look at your future, all right? So, I, I do this with friends where we, where we get together and we, we shape questions. And then we uh, draw anonymously from 
the angel cards and we take whatever quality shows up and we begin to explore what that means for me. So I, I you know, I was so tempted to draw angel cards for you. <laughs> <laughs> However, however, that's going to be your homework assignment, all right? But I will suggest three questions. What quality must each of you express during this coming year that will deepen you and your spiritual community? What quality that you have that you will need to bring to this year? The second one is, what quality will I more deeply experience because I have focused on that other quality for the year? What deepens? And here's the challenging thing. What quality must you give up to move more deeply into becoming a prosperous and thriving spiritual community. So I'll share one example of this with, with, um, with uh, um, uh, a young uh, niece and her fiance who were visiting me, and we did, we did a similar thing in that. And one of the cards that my niece drew was the card that the things she had to give up was balance. And, and, and it was fascinating to watch that word. Why would one give up balance, okay, sort of thing? And what she has spent her life in, in some really challenging situations where she feels she's always had to be in that center of balancing, a balance between her, her mom and dad, a balancing between friends who were on the outs with each other and, and that, and, and, and she's very good at it. Well, as the discussion continued, and we looked at that word, what also came up was, you know, another word for balance is control. Control. That doesn't resonate with me. <laughs> <laughs> However, that's the magic of, of that exploration was suddenly recognizing for this particular person that perhaps it was time for her to give up control, that she wasn't going to fix it, okay, and that. So that to me is the power of that. So. I want to I end with another quote from Brene Brown. Vulnerable ability is the birthplace of love, belonging, joy, courage, empathy, and creativity. It is the source of hope, the source of empathy, the source of accountability, and the source of authenticity. If we want greater clarity in our purpose or deeper and more meaningful spiritual lives, vulnerability is the path. There is only us. There is only now. There is only here. Give in to love. No other path. No other way. No day but today. Thank you. Uh, take a moment to look around and be, be aware of how vulnerable you might feel when you look around. And in looking around, how willing are you to 
be visible. Breathe in. Keep breathing. And know, not only is this vulnerability, but it's love showing up in a safe space. And know that it's good. And know you can let it in. Take in a breath. Let it in. And so it is.